Okay. I think we have an offense. We had a legit, competent offense out there. A lot of us were calling for Matt Canada to be fired. Fire Matt Canada chance all throughout Akershore Stadium last week. Dare I say, hire Matt Canada. What's funny, though, is I want to get into the news that broke today, earlier today before the game, like, what was it? It was probably even before the 1 o'clock games came out. I want to get into this news because it actually kind of ties into what all just took place because if Matt Canada supposedly got this promotion earlier today, according to Schultz, Jordan Schultz, Schultz report. Let me pull up the uh, the tweet real quick here. What's going to happen now after this week in the offense's performance? So last week, the defense, the Steelers defense outscored the Steelers offense and supposedly Matt Canada gets a promotion. And now we put up 23 points, look competent, close things out in the fourth quarter too. I don't think that could be highlighted enough either. I think that final drive to get the Raiders to take up all their timeouts, get Presley Harvin to punt that really nice punt all the way down opposite end of the field. The dude actually was fumbling all over the place and basically call game. The offense closed the deal out. I know Levi Wallace did end up getting the final pick, right? That's what's going to go on the stat sheet and whatnot. No, but the offense did it. To get that first down, to make that play call, that counted for something. But here's the tweet. Jordan Schultz says, Steelers are moving OC Matt Canada to a more prominent role, working with quarterback Kenny Pickett. Canada will continue calling plays, but will also be working directly with Pickett on a daily basis. The 51-year-old was hired in 2020 as a QB's coach, promoted to coordinator prior to the 2021 season. Pittsburgh believes in Canada, and they anticipate this making a big difference. I mean, th there's a few thoughts here. I won't spend too much time on this. I, I just find it really funny that this comes out after how the offense performed last week and we we know it wasn't pretty so after this week is canada going to be co-owner with rooney's is he moving up to head coach and then he might be gm and yeah then i'll get an ownership stake at some point i don't know i don't know but i think the offense looked good i think canada improved his play calling we'll get into that more as this stream goes on pick it looked better the o-line looked better it was just it was nice but uh what's funny though too he also said Jalen warren and pickens will be taking on larger roles moving forward and i think we got to see that today i know pickens didn't have the explosive play like he did last week the 70 yard touchdown but he was targeted a lot and not as early as maybe we wanted but as the game went on we got it to pickens more and more his final stat line hold on let me pull that up real quick for you his final stat line ended up being i think it was around 70 yards no hold on i lost it i lost it lost it on nfl.com I might have to refresh. Hold on. Oh, I lost it. Man. All right. I'm pretty sure he had like 70 yards. I, I might pull it up on my phone real quick. Um, But okay. Yeah, the offense looked good. I, I'll just put it to you that way. And it wasn't looking promising at the start. It, it looked a lot like the same. Uh, Two, three and outs. And then the defense looked all right to start off. The Raiders were moving the ball a little bit in the second series. And then fourth and inches, I guess you got to give props to the Raiders on the play call, doing the whole play action and whatnot, and getting our corners to bump up. Levi Wallace was guarding Devontae Adams. I thought Pat P was there to help. A lot of people were saying, oh, Pat P got really burned on that play and whatnot. But I felt that was more Levi Wallace. He was supposed to be on Adams. And I think you just give props to the play call. That was a gutsy play call, fourth and inches. Usually you just do a QB sneak or you do a run or whatnot. But, no, they were going Todd Haley style. Remember Todd Haley would do stuff like that? Oh, you can't – hold on, hold on, hold on. You guys saying you can't hear anything? Can you guys hear me good? Let me know if I got to make an adjustment here. Let's 
Some of you guys are saying no sound. You might have to. I, I, I don't think everyone's saying that. Okay. Okay. I, I got confirmation. I think we're good. Anyway. um, Where was I at? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The defense. Raiders get up 7-0. Offense. Couple quick three and outs. But then we got the response from our guy, KP8. Delivers the deep ball to Calvin Austin. And that's the one where you got to pull out the receipts, man. Where, where's all the haters at? Where's the doubters at saying Pecky can't throw a deep ball? Because that was a beautiful pass. It's unfortunate because him and Calvin have not been able to connect on some of the more shorter passes. You know what I mean? Just a little bit off. But that one, you know, a 70-yard bomb is perfect on the money. So Steelers get it to 7-7. Seven to seven. We're on our way. Then defense just feeds off that momentum we got a tj watt sack which happened too i love the timing of it because collinsworth was highlighting a play where the right tackle was actually able to get a stop on tj and then the next play it's like no you're not going to be able to do that for back-to-back -back plays tj watt sack that's how much impact that dude has and then levi wallace got himself an interception now it was not the best day for him by any stretch of the imagination Devonta adams is really good Devonta Adams put up a lot of yards against our defense, and Levi Wallace was <laughs> guarding him a fair amount. So he had his ups and downs. He had a couple nice PBUs. He ended the game with two interceptions. But you got to give the dude credit for fighting. He bounced back right there. That was a big redemption pick. And then right before half, offense was able to put a couple more drives together, get some field goals. Obviously, we would like to have those end in touchdowns, but – Hey, it's just nice to have 13 points up on the board before halftime and be up 13 to 7. I thought with how we started that game, going into halftime the way we did was perfect. Offense moving the ball. We definitely had momentum. Pickett started to settle in more and more, look more comfortable. And then the defense was getting after Garoppolo. And they were building off their own confidence. You know what I mean? And then special teams. Presley Harvin was really good punting in the first half. Had a hiccup or two in the second half. And then Chris Boswell was absolutely money today. Absolutely money. Hit the 57-yarder in the second half. Um, but, yeah, we got after it once we got out of halftime. Defense, Cole Holcomb with the big hit. The refs had to swallow their whistles there. Initially, they wanted to throw the flag, but no, it was an absolutely clean hit. Credit to Cole Holcomb there. And then offense kept moving the ball. Boswell, 57-yard field goal. And then we got it back again, and that's when Canada was in his bag with the play calling. Pickett was doing rollouts and everything and was able to hit Muth for the touchdown. We get up 23-7, to and I thought the game was over. I'm like, okay, okay, let's get the ball back. Let's get the ball back and just close out the game. We could go to sleep early tonight, man. We don't have to uh, stress this one out like typical Steeler games. You know what I mean? But then it happened, and it happened for multiple reasons. One, actually the main reason, the main reason, let's just get it out of the way. One was the refs. The refs were terrible. They were making awful calls left and right down the stretch. It's either they were on the Raiders payroll. One of you guys mentioned in the chat uh, they had Raiders money line. Or the league offices called in and said, hey, this game's starting to get out of hand. We might be losing some viewership. Let's let's start making some BS calls to get this thing closer. That's what happened because here here's the one here's the one that was there was a couple that were egregious. The field goal one, the field goal one where they called leverage. Dude, he just jumped up. He just jumped up. It looked like a completely normal play. I don't know what the announcers were seeing. They were saying like, ah, yeah, I think uh, I could see what the refs are uh, seeing right there. But no, 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 that was bad. But this this was the one right here. The Minka Fitzpatrick. Uh, unnecessary, what did they call it? Roughing the passer, unnecessary roughness. I think it was because his helmet barely grazed uh, Jimmy G's face mask. But yeah, here's this play. You guys tell me, man. I don't think I'm crazy. All my friends in the group message too, we were watching this. We're like, dude, you can't make this call. The league's gone soft. Like this, this is this is the problem with some of the new ref rules and just new rules that the NFL has in place. I, I get they're going for player safety, but sometimes you're taking what makes football 
out of the game. You know what I mean? The the physicality, just normal tackles like this. Like, how else was he supposed to hit Jimmy G here? That is a normal tackle. I, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, that that helped them because all of a sudden I think they gave him the first down. They gave him halfway distance to the goal too. They ended up scoring the touchdown, getting the two point conversion. And even the two-point conversion was sketchy. They called pass interference on Chandon Sullivan. Don't think the ball was catchable. Don't think it was catchable. Um, but, yeah, that's essentially, in my opinion, how the Raiders started to get back into it. Now, we were playing some softer defenses, and the Raiders, to their credit, they stuck with running the ball. They were getting the ball to Josh Jacobs, and that is the counter to the type of defense that we're playing, being out there in nickel and dime and whatnot because we have more – secondary players out there corners and safeties and whatnot so they, they were able to move the ball but calls like this were able to extrapolate or make it easier for the raiders to come back and get it closer than what we would have liked but ultimately came down to us offense over two minutes left there was the two minute warning raiders had a couple timeouts all we needed was that first down and we got the first down shout out to matt canada for the play calling and shout out to Kenny Pickett for the pass to Allen Robinson. And then shout out to Presley Arvin for the punt. Got to uh, got to give credit where credit is due right there as well. I want to pull up these. <laughs> I, I gave you guys the uh, the Pickens and Warren tweet. I still want to pull up to see their actual stat lines. But it was prevalent. Like Both those guys were definitely prevalent in the game plan. And we're going to talk Warren more as this stream goes on because – I got a few things to say about our running back situation. And I, you probably know where I'm going to lead. Okay, this is an NFL.com problem, actually, because uh, I'm trying to pull up the stats on my phone. They're not even showing up. So, obviously, I tried to show you on the screen, but I can't even get them right here. I am I think, if <laughs> my estimation right now, I think Pickens had, had to have been close to 70. Did he have, like, 60? 60, had, like, five or six catches. And then Warren, he probably had, like, Close to 30 on the ground, and he had a couple catches as well. Probably 50 or 60 total yards for him. Maybe even more. Maybe like 70 total yards. But yeah, I can't find the stats right now. I do know we won 23 to 18. You know we're going to be on that Raiders pack. Shout out to you guys in the chat for uh, stopping in right now. Let me read some of what you're saying. Because tomorrow, I'm going to be doing another stream tomorrow. We'll focus more on winners and losers of the game so i'm not gonna go into much much detail with individual players for today's stream just more like overall reaction just complete overview of the game you know what i mean uh okay nicky knuckles yeah he, he he knows what i'm gonna be saying here soon he says Jalen warren is rb1 uh mac backwards the o-line looked night and day better now we did face a lesser defense that's part of it but these type of games matter like that's how you should look against a lesser defense and then that's what helps build the confidence that's what help helps an o-line to start gelling you know what i mean and build that chemistry going forward so that's exactly what we needed to see exactly <laughs> uh <laughs> What do you guys say? Imagine giving this crumb a promotion. You talking about Matt Canada? <laughs> uh, listen, man. Listen, man. I Yeah, I think the tweet coming out was so random. I didn't get it. I didn't understand it at the time. And it makes you think, too, like, why weren't Canada and Pickett doing that all along? I feel like that's probably how an offensive coordinator and quarterback relationship should be, right? They should be in constant communication. But maybe this is just going to be extra from what it already was. I also had a theory on that Canada report that came out earlier, though. I, it might have to do with Tomlin maybe starting to back out more on the game plan. Because I've heard many interviews, many sound bites over the last year, year and a half where it's pretty clear that Tomlin has a ton of say in what's going on in the offense. And we know Tomlin's upbringing is not offense. He's a very, very heavy defensive-minded coach. So I wonder if he kind of 
wanted to take the training wheels off and say, hey, Canada, I'm giving you more leeway here. Not maybe not leeway, more ownership of the offense. And it's gonna be on you and Pickett now. It's gonna be on you guys. And we saw that they delivered today, man. I, I know there are definitely some complaints that we can have. And one of them's gonna be about the uh the running back and what we can do there. But uh, yeah, I mean offense stalled a little bit after we got up twenty three to seven. Didn't like that. But still, I mean, you win the game. You play to win the game, and we won the game. Offense did enough. I think the offense looked better in this game than pretty much every game last year, right? This might have been our best performance in the Pickett Canada air. Now, maybe you could argue Week 18 against the Browns last year, but this was a good game. This was a really solid game. Sunday night football, on the road, primetime, that means something too. Because we're just coming off of a primetime game last week against the Browns where our offense was not good and was very deserving of the critiques that were going on. We had the Fire Canada chance in the crowd. And that's a big question coming into this game. How are you going to respond as an offense? Kenny Pickett as a young quarterback. Matt Canada as an offensive coordinator going into your third year. You don't have the greatest experience as – an NFL coordinator yourself. So everyone responded how they were supposed to. The O-line you guys brought up. Uh, obviously, Pickens had a solid game. Calvin Austin. Calvin Austin, too, in the punt return game is lethal. He's definitely going to break one this year. Absolutely. Uh, Benji Bag says those touchdown passes were beautiful. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. Those were perfect. I guess we got to give credit to the calls too, right? Guys wide open for touchdowns. <laughs> Has something to do with the play caller, no? Wait, you got, hold on, hold on. Wait, I'm going to make a pull on this. Because I'm still seeing some like Canada needs to get out of Pittsburgh comments in the chat. Yeah, let me let me throw that up. <laughs> do you, okay, uh, how, do we, how do we phrase this? Fire Canada still? That's what I'm going to do. You guys give me uh, the response. What's the, what's the pulse of Steeler Nation after this W? Fire Canada? Question mark. I think he's good. I think he's good, man. I liked what I saw today. I think he took some of my advice for the offense too. We got more in shotgun. We got we got like Kenny cooking a little bit. Three, four, five wide, getting the passes out quick so we don't have to rely on our offensive line holding up the whole game. You know what I mean? Against a Raiders pass rush that includes Max Crosby. Now he was getting after it too. Like we we weren't perfect in the offensive line game, but I do think they improved and the run blocking, for sure. And then we got Jalen Warren out there more, it felt like. Or maybe it was more of the same, but I think we utilized them more out of shotgun with those inside runs and whatnot. Basically, it was less lateral, college, gimmicky type of stuff. And we got back to a lot of what we were doing last year at the end of 2022, ground and pound, running the wall. We got some, like, three, four, five-yard runs from Najee, just straight line. We also didn't have any offensive line penalties from what I can recall. If we had one, it wasn't noticeable. Like, I don't remember it right now. And we, so we combined some of that stuff from last year, where it's just, hey, we're running the ball, we're getting after it, moving it, trying to move the chains, with a little bit more spread, a little bit more like, okay, let's let's see what Kenny can do, what reads he can make, like, right off the bat. And it worked, man. It worked. Sixburg Steelers says, I don't think there was one jet sweep. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't think there was one jet sweep. Ryan McPherson. Oh, that, Ryan McPherson was good, man. Thanks for stopping by. He says, give Kenny more freedom. Yeah, that. so that's, okay. Yeah, yeah, Let's get into this then. If we're going to have, like, critiques or just things we could work on going forward. I don't want us to be as obvious when Najee's out there. I feel like when Najee's out there, we're running the ball up the middle. 
So there were some plays we had success with it. There were other plays where it just felt like we're handing the ball off to them and it's a waste. We're getting stopped at the goal line. Second down, second and 10. You know what I mean? Whereas whenever you have Jalen Warren out there, you can mix and match. You could shuffle him out for a pass. You saw many times he would actually start out as a receiver and then motion in back to be a running back. I feel like it keeps the defense on their toes way more when you have Jalen Warren out there. Cause you could just do so many different things. Like if we have four wide Jalen Warren in the shotgun, you could just give him an inside zone, a halfback draw or something like that. And then I could see him gashing a defense for five yards, six yards, maybe even a 10 yard play, get us a first down just, just off that. You know what I mean? Whereas Najee Harris, it feels like every time we run the ball with him, I don't think we're getting, anything more than five yards to be honest with you now there may have been a couple outlier runs tonight but that's what it feels like and you could tell me if i'm wrong on that i i feel like that's the truth it feels like Najee is is much more of a plotter and when he's out there the offense feels more predictable whereas when it's Jalen warren i feel like we could be more explosive we could do a lot more things that's that and so i don't know if that's a matt canada thing or if that's a tomlin thing making sure which personnel is going to be out there or whatnot. But I think that's a way that we can improve the offense for sure. For sure. It, 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 I mean, I don't know what that means. Did we just bench Najee? All right, now he's only getting like 20, 30% of the snaps. You give Jalen Warren 70%. I don't know how that looks. I just don't know at this point if Najee fits what this Steelers offense could become or evolve into if that makes sense. Like, I think Najee could still be a solid running back in this league. I just don't know if it's for us, where we could both get the max potential out of each other, the Steelers as an offense, and even Najee Harris himself. Like, me personally, I would like another Jalen Warren, where you just rotate two running backs just like Jalen Warren out there. Keep the defense always guessing. And they got that speed. They jump off the screen whenever they hand the ball off. Like, you, you know what it is. You you know it feels like a night and day difference. You you know what you're seeing on TV. When Jalen Warren gets the ball versus when Najee Harris gets the ball. I hate to say it, too. Like, this is with all due respect. I'm giving my, my Mark Jackson with all due respect. Because I like Najee. You appreciate what he's done with the team. But I feel like Jalen Warren should be RB1. Outside of that... What would I like to see more of this offense? Because I think we we showed signs we're getting there in terms of using the field more. Like that would be they're the middle of the field more. That would be one thing I would bring up. We got moved the ball middle of the field. We hit Pickens on a really nice drag route. No, I I I liked what we did, man. I liked what we did tonight. It, it was a lot of the stuff that I was suggesting uh earlier in the week after that monday night game and how we can improve the offense so it was cool uh, it was cool to see man if we could just keep the offense going like this evolve it more and more like you guys said get pick it more involved and th this would be the other thing then too as i was talking about when we have nausea out there it feels predictable defense feels like they're looking for the run it's kind of obvious i want Pickett to have the control to audible out of that but I don't know if Najee's the guy to be out there when you're making the audible. I think Jalen Warren would be better for that. So those those would be the main two things. We, we might have to be shifting more towards Jalen Warren being RB1. And then I would like Pickett to have more control. When we're out there, it looks like a run. Can, can, he, make, can he make a switch up or something? Give a hot route, give an audible, whatnot. It's like this is going to probably be a dead play. Max, we're going to get three yards. Why don't we try to just do something different? Try to throw the defense off. Give them a play action. Maybe we can switch up the formation on the fly here. Get it into shotgun and whatnot. Try to find a mismatch. Those are just some thoughts um, in terms of just going forward, things we can improve. But what's good is we got the Texans this week. They're one of the lesser teams. In the league, they had a good – we, we can't overlook them, though. They had a really nice performance against the Jaguars today. 
Um, and then we got Ravens, who I don't think they're that amazing this year. Did anyone watch that Ravens Colts game? I think mean, we got the Ravens second week in October. I think it's like October eighth at home. Then we got the bye. So yeah, I, th I think this is this is a great win, man. This is a great win to start getting momentum going, building the confidence as a team. The defense was already there, um, obviously from last week, them putting up 14 points. But now we get the offense clicking with the defense. And I think the defense played really good today. The only hiccup with them is the secondary. We couldn't stop Devontae Adams. He is Devontae Adams. He's really good. One of the three best receivers in the league right now. But there, there are there have been signs. There have been connections through these first three weeks where, yeah, yeah, you can start questioning the secondary a little bit. Pat P at times, Levi Wallace at times. I like it when JPJ is out there. I don't think we see too much negative from him. Usually it's a positive play when he's out there. But yeah, I think, I mean, yeah, I don't think there's too much more negative about the defense because – D-line was good. We stopped the run game for the most part outside of the second half when, again, I said we're playing more like soft coverage and whatnot, and that's a way for the Raiders to counter that so they could keep moving the ball and whatnot. Overall, just a really good team win. Really good team win, all facets. We, we had hiccups in all facets, but overall, I think passing grades, offense, defense, special teams as a whole, passing grades. B, B plus type of grades. You know what I mean? That's good. Um, yeah, I'm back tomorrow. So I'll, like I said, I'll go more in depth on like a player by player basis, winners and losers from tonight's game. But I'll read off some more chats and then I'll get out of here, man. I'll get out of here. Shout out to you guys for stopping by as always. Oh yeah, I gotta check out the results of the uh, the poll too. What are you guys saying? I, I, I'm interested in this. This is gonna be funny. <laughs> uh, okay, you guys are still wanting to fire Canada. Okay, sixty three percent say yes. Thirty seven percent say no. <laughs> okay, so you guys, I, I bet you that number though. Uh, if, I, I forgot to do a poll after Monday night's game. I bet you that number would have been pretty much as close to 100% as possibly could be. That would have been like 95%. No doubt. Possibly 100%. Oh, yeah, this one was a good one. Benji Bags, 39, says Kenny had a 26-yard run that got called back, but he got the wheels. That was a ball don't lie moment because – that was another terrible call by the refs. They called uh, illegal movement or something on Pickens. They are saying he wasn't set. He was set when the ball was hiked. I, I don't care what you say. He was moving a little bit uh, before the snap, but as soon as the ball was snapped, he was standing still. So they called back that really nice run. But Kenny picked up the first down anyway, doing it the same way with his legs. It just wasn't as long of a run. It was like a, what, 9, 10-yard run. Got the first down, kept things moving. Wait, wait, now you're, all right, Benji Bags is saying, no, it was illegal formation because he barely moved. I don't know. I, I, I didn't think that was a penalty. I think that was ticky-tacky. That was messed up. Yeah, he's like moving his chin strap. But I swear when the ball snapped, he wasn't moving. Timothy Newton, how about this question? Do you think it was still Canada calling plays? It felt different to me. Yeah, it did. It was it was a different offense from what we saw the first two weeks. I thought it, there was some of what we were doing last year, end of 2022, after the bye. We had a, we had a combo of that. But then I also saw a little bit more like spread out, let Kenny cook style. So I think it was a perfect blend for what we needed in tonight's game. It, it was different. We didn't, we didn't get any of that lateral stuff uh, that we were doing last week, college gimmicky stuff. It was pro style, and that's how I felt about our offense last year. It wasn't this Canada college style that everyone was speculating about. It, it became very pro style, and I'm for that because I think it works with this team. Uh, Zaninator69 says, 
Pickett was finally rolling out and not staying in the pocket waiting for the O line to fail. And there were a couple play designs for that too, just some rollouts. It wasn't even like play action rollouts, just some rollouts for Kenny. Let him scan the field, try to minimize Max Crosby. And then, uh, yeah, when he had to, he got out of there, made some plays with his feet, but then also looking down the field, trying to make a strike through the air. Yeah, I mean, he, he looked good. He just looked comfortable. He looked a lot more comfortable than he did the first two weeks. Uh, Jacob Jefferson, do you think Canada could call a game against the Chiefs offense and keep pace? Uh, probably not right now, but I mean, if if this is the trend, if we can get more games like this, add some new elements to it, kind of the suggestions that I brought up today, give more uh, freedom to Kenny at the line, get Jalen Warren in there more. And we don't forget, we still got Deontay Johnson coming back too. Still got Deontay coming back. I mean, by end of season, who knows, man? Who knows? <laughs> it's crazy. I just said fire Canada last week, and now I'm thinking uh, – Canada's going to be up there with the best play callers by season end. <laughs> yeah, Mac backwards. Muth finally got some run. Sheesh, hello. Yeah, good things Good things happen when you get Muth the ball. I wonder if there's some type of win correlation with him. You know how with TJ, whenever he plays games, our record is ridiculously better than what it is whenever TJ Watt misses. I wonder if there's a stat line for Muth like if he at least gets five catches in a game or if he at least gets a touchdown, what our record is. So I'm sure it's good. It feels like any time Moose getting the ball, we're we're winning games. Uh, Casey, yo mom says, what about the rough in the passer call? I talked about that earlier. Yeah, it was terrible. Like, I mean, it was pretty much a normal tackle. And Minka's helmet maybe grazed jimmy g's face mask or his helmet it, it was just a bad call even the announcers were saying that if you got collinsworth and Tarico questioning it and saying like man i don't i don't know about that then yeah it was it was not the right call to make all right man well i'll be back tomorrow i think i'm back at like 11 11 30 i'll let you guys know on twitter instagram or whatnot and, uh, yeah, big win tonight. Victory Monday tomorrow. I'm not going to botch that up like I did last week. I kept thinking uh, the Tuesday stream was Monday just because it was the day after uh, Steelers football. Uh, Casey O'Mom says, Levi Wallace killed it today. He, I mean, he had hiccups. It was, it was back and forth, but <laughs> ultimately he did get two interceptions. Could have had a third. I thought he could have had a third down a sideline, but he just, like, tipped it. Yeah, he had a mixed bag. Him and Pat P, they've been – it's it's been mixed bags. That's the one thing with the defense I think you could be a little concerned with going forward, have some question marks. But hopefully JPJ gets some more playing time. And, yeah, I mean, the pass I – mean, with, with how our defense is built, the pass rush should help take care of – a lot of our secondary was like you get to see it down in and down out. Like they show highlights of how quick we get to the quarterback and where they have to make a decision within like however many seconds. It's like they got their first read and then maybe you get your second read. Oh yeah, Desmond King got active today, but uh we just used him for kick returns and he was a better kick returner than Gunner, even though I don't think he even did a kick return. He didn't do uh, an out-of-bounds uh, catch on the 10 that cost us 30 yards. So there's that. He didn't do any boneheaded gunner type of plays. So that was a positive for Desmond King. But all right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Go Steelers. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else, man. Yeah, big win tonight. Good team win. Start to finish, I'd say. It started off rocky, but that kind of shows the mental toughness. Game got away from us a little bit with the refs' poor calls, and then we get a chance to just officially close it out, and the offense does that, and defense gets the pick to officially close it. But, yeah, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Go Steelers, and uh, peace.